Uh, the rarest book I have at the moment is the first edition of Winnie the Pooh. Can we see that? Yes, of course. Published 1926, so it was not published in um, large numbers because the publishers didn't know what to expect. An original first edition of this is, is quite uncommon. How much is it worth? Uh, theoretically in the three to four thousand dollar range. It will just have to wait until an investor comes in because um, once or twice a year I get people coming in who've been sent by their financial advisors to, um, to get rid of money before the end of the financial year. The real seed, I think, was sown when I was working as a garbage man in the north of England, as, uh, when I was knocking around England in the 60s. And we would often get books that we would pick up. It was a very posh area and it produced a lot of antiques and collectibles. I was living in a household full of university students and near the university there was a very good second-hand bookshop. I thought this looked like a pretty nice way to spend one's life and a nice way to make one's living. So. It was there as a vague ambition in the back of my mind from my teens. I started working in the very early 70s for university co-op bookshops in Sydney and before very long I was managing one of their shops and I had not been long in the bookselling environment when I realised that this was for me, this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life and indeed I have. After a few moves and many ups and downs, here I am. To the right of the door is ancient history and archaeology, Renaissance, Tudor and medieval, atlases here, theology, railway books, anthropology and Pacific studies, don't ask why they all go together, cookery, gardening and plant biology, wine and other beverages, juvenile literature, natural history, politics, we have sport, Aboriginal studies, health and personal development, science and technology, flight, popular music, craft, art, architecture, classical music, photography, art technique, calligraphy, fashion and design, drama, verse, classics, hardbacks, classics, paperbacks, Australian fiction, 20th and 21st century literary fiction. This is military, film, myths and legends, herbals, reference books of all kinds, genre fiction starting with crime fiction, historical fiction, fantasy and science fiction, mining and minerals, women's studies, philosophy, Eastern thought, esoterica and humour, crime non-fiction, um, there you have it. I must say that although much has been made of the digital age and the decline in reading, I haven't found that to be true by and large. Uh, we are now getting, for instance, a larger segment of our customer base is composed of young people now than it was, say, 15 years ago. Once people become acculturated to reading physical books, it isn't something that tends to leave them. You know, they will be readers for the rest of their lives. The alternative to uh, a second-hand book culture uh, is that a lot of these books are going to be destroyed, uh, which would be terrible. I mean, even the most modest paperback uh, can contain something of cultural value. And a lot of these books, particularly the older ones, are artworks in their own right. So it is encouraging that people have shown enough interest to keep us afloat all of these years. Sadly, you know, we've been doing this for nearly 30 years and we've been quite used to doing deceased estates, but sadly in the last 10 to 15 years, they're very often cases of senile dementia, Alzheimer's, you know, people who have these magnificent libraries but who don't remember their own children's names, which is poignant, you know, and it would be poignant even if they were not literary sophisticates. Um, but there's some, it has a special effect on you when you see something, you know, somebody who's had um, a brilliant mind and um, are now sort of living, virtually a living death. It's, it's terribly upsetting. But the books have got to go somewhere and um, not long ago I had um, a call from a lady who had contacted another book dealer who didn't want to come out and look but I agreed to come and look and I found um, a garage full of beautifully kept, mainly modern popular fiction, but a lot of um, history and biography, quite a lot of travel and true adventure. And uh, there were thousands of them. And I said I would have to um, get back to her with the price, and she said, oh no, we want to give them to you. 
So that was um, three van loads. Well, very often they, they're not giving them away. Sometimes, sometimes people make donations. Sometimes they just want swaps. The majority of them want to sell them for cash. But what they don't want, above all, is for them to be destroyed. Um, people have very intimate connections to their books, even if they're quite, you know, Agatha Christie's. They wouldn't like to see their Agatha Christie's end up in a tip. And so we do save many tens of thousands of books from um, the dreaded debting. Uh, we certainly have had 17th century, etc. books, but at the moment I think the oldest one in the shop is um, 1826 and it's written by Darwin's father, Erasmus Darwin. Now let me just see if I can turn that one up for you because I know it is here somewhere. In almost every case when I, where I think I've been ripped off, the book has subsequently turned up elsewhere in the shop, what happens is people pick them up and they put them down somewhere where they shouldn't have done so. Um, and here it is, The Botanic Garden, a poem in two parts containing the economy of vegetation and the loves of the plants with philosophical notes by Erasmus Darwin, MD, London 1824. So how much would this one be worth? $300. $300. Mm -hmm. If anybody happens to see this who is young and who has uh, a consuming interest in life, my advice to them would be identify what it is in life you love the most and then try to commercialize it so that you can spend your life doing just that. Um, I wish I'd had, I've had nearly 30 years doing it. I wish I'd had 50. I wish I'd done it when I was in my late teens or early twenties, but you know, if wishes were horses, beggars would ride, and I have uh, no right to complain. I've had a wonderful career, and I've met the most fantastic people. You know, that's one of the, the big emotional payoffs of a business like this, is the people that you meet. I have had people who've been corporate lawyers who are multimillionaires, who are hooked on the money and hooked on the lifestyle, but who at the end of their lives wish they devoted themselves to something that was more soul-nurturing. You know, it's well said that nobody on their deathbed ever wishes they'd worked harder. Very few people on their deathbed wish that they'd made more money. What they want is the idea that they've lived a life that has some spiritual content and value to it. And I can say that this has um, had plenty.